your plane with two top fuel drivers going underneath. All right, we're here at Pomona, California Auto Club Raceway for the NHRA Finals. We're with Clay Milliken, a racer who's been racing top fuel for 23 years. 23 years. Since 98. Since 98. Pretty amazing. It is crazy. I really appreciate you guys coming out today. and. Uh, Six-time IHRA World Champion, have not notched that NHRA Championship, but we're working on that. And today, 1320 video is going to take you through the people that make this Parts Plus Top Fuel car run. Yeah. And I'm excited for you to meet them all. They're all great individuals. Do a heck of a job. And you're going to get to learn what it takes to make 11, 12,000 horsepower, 330 plus mile an hour runs. and. Uh, you're going to love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be meeting your team and seeing what who it takes to keep this thing running, what it takes between each round, the parts involved, the cost. What is the general budget to run one of these? Basically, you know, we look at it as $100,000 a race. Now, there are teams out here that are double and triple that kind of number. We're a very small team, and we don't have the quantity of parts that most of these teams do. And our team, because we're in that situation, they probably spend a little more time kind of loving and rubbing on the parts that we do have to make sure they can make a good run. And, and they can push the limits a little bit. We can further. push the limits yeah. because we're not a uh, run it, toss it kind of team. We're a run it, let's check it, measure it, see if we can use it again. Gotcha. And it takes a select special group of people that do that, and that's who you're going to get to meet today. These are people that care about what it takes to make this thing go quick and fast and also looking out for that budget. Yeah, let's get right to it. Let's do it. Oh, I know where we're going. Yeah, we're gonna check This is out. the boost department. Absolutely. <laughs> boost department is is. How's Levi it going? Hi. Right. And Levi will give Kyle, you. Kyle, nice uh, to meet Kyle. you. Nice to meet you. Levi will give you a quick rundown of kind of about the supercharger and, and what he has to do in between runs, and it's on you now, Levi. Now, during the weekend, I take care of the supercharger and intake manifold. Uh, basically, it seems like. We have to rebuild one of this, these uh, blowers, like every run, and that includes the uh, strips in the rotor. And I go over, like install nuts and bolts, make sure nothing's going to fall off of it. And this, uh, there's these plastic strips that go on the rotor, and these are the ODs and these are the IDs. So that's inside the blower. Yeah. On the rotors are actually. We can flip a rotor. Sure. Oh, cool. <laughs> that makes it easy. <laughs> Nice. Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. So it's so, just like a gasket inside the rotors? So, yeah, these plastic strips, and I check the clearance between the OD and the inside of the case to make sure we get keep to our tolerance, tolerance that we like to keep it to. And if it's too big, which normally has been lately, I have to strip <laughs> it and just to make it best it can be for the next round. Gotcha. How much boost does this thing push through the motor usually? You know, I... I I believe 60. Usually, I don't go up there and ask. Uh, I don't hear from That's Mike. That's the tutor's job. Yeah, I don't hear from Mike very much, so I must be doing my job right. <laughs> yeah, that is so, a good sign. Yeah, so there's, that's about there is, all there is to it for me. I mean, it seems to make it a little simpler than it probably is. Sure. But let's go over the blower, make sure the strips are right, and make sure nothing falls off the car. You want to flip it back over? I want to look at a few of the parts on here. Primarily, this blanket right here. You want to explain what this does? Uh, and the straps? Basically, the straps, if we were to uh, pop the blower, bang the blower, the straps will keep the blower on the car so it won't go out in the track or out in the stand. Yep. And the, the blanket is for to keep the, if the case were to come apart to try to contain it. Uh, these are billet cases. Back in the day, they used to be uh, magnesium. Okay. And actually, when you bang the blower, it split the case. But uh, went to yeah. billet cases, and it stays together now. Just chips things inside and yeah, keeps I mean, it together pretty, for the part. I would say bomb proof because it is a bomb, but so, yeah. I, mean, uh, I mean, they're pretty good. Do you know approximate cost for the entire assembly here? Don't quote me, but I believe it's about 12000 for just the, the blower, case, and rotors, and gears, and end okay. frames. And then we got the rest of it to go through. Yeah, the rest of it, I believe the injector's around $5,000. Okay. So 15 to 20 max. Yeah, I mean, 
And how many spares do you have on hand? We have four superchargers wow. and uh, two injectors. We lost one of our injectors earlier this year, so I hope we get back uh, that back again. Well, I appreciate you giving us a rundown on the blower, a little more insight into what makes this thing run. Thank you for your time. Well, Good luck you. racing. All right, guys, I want y'all to meet Caitlin Simmons, or as some of us call her, Bruce. She is the absolute clutch specialist truck driver of our top fuel team. Yeah. Caitlin. Awesome. So let's give you a rundown of the clutch department. So everything base, back, and the motor plate back is my responsibility. So first we're going to load one of our flywheels in. All of our facing material here is cut perfectly flat. We're within a half thou tolerance on everything. We set our stands to a specific height. That height is based on our clutch package, the facing material, and what we run as a pack gap. So these are adjustable and they're set per run. This we call the donut and this we call the cover. Together they're our pressure plate. This is normally loaded up with levers. I'm working on it right now. Um, and then over here we have our clutch backs. Um, we run three new discs, three used discs. Everything over here is cut perfectly flat within a half thou as well. There are different date codes and we study the date codes. The date codes will tell us when they went in the oven, the temperature they came out of the oven, what materials are in it, the different percentages of materials. Um, and then we adjust the clutch wear based on the steel plates that we put in. You can have six groove, four groove, eight groove, and that'll adjust the clutch wear. So we study how each disc wears, and then we use the levers to control the wear. So we're constantly in a slip all the way down the track. We never really go one-to-one. -one. So once these are loaded up and everything's put together, um, we can change the weight on the clutch to the weight of your fingernail. So everything's down to the absolute wow. last detail. And you've got four complete sets here? Yes, so when I show up ready. to the track, I have seven or eight packs sitting on the counter. We have a spare pack at all times. Um, so right now we got one in the car when sitting out their stage for our third qualifier today. Nice. But yeah, this is all the elimination rounds. Yep, this is Sunday. Do you know approximate cost of some of these parts? Yep. So uh, clutch disc is about one hundred and seventy dollars a piece. So, so like I said, two to three runs out of it. These floaters are sixty-five a piece, um, and they can they're trash afterwards. So they yeah. warp too much for us to be able to resurface them. Um, a clutch donut and stuff. Uh, flywheels like six grand. Uh, the donuts I believe are eight to ten. And I'm not really sure on the You get a lot of cover. use out of these? Yeah, yeah. So like these covers, we'll run these all year. So really gotcha. you just change out facing material. So okay. as soon as the facings get too low or past our tolerance, I'll just change out the material and we'll start fresh again. But you can get about 60 runs out of a set of facings. And in Top Fuel, there's really no transmission. It's just these clutches it's grabbing on to, yep. yeah, just grabbing on to apply the power to the ground. Yep, exactly. It's, a, it's just a, pretty much it's an oversized go kart clutch. It's a, just central ah, yeah. force. So. Good way of putting it. Yeah. Well, thanks for some insight into no your problem. world. Uh, I appreciate we'll it. We'll see you in action later when you're getting things swapped out. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be rowdy today. Good luck today. Thank you. All right, folks, I want y'all to meet Justin, or better known as the Angry Hornet. And if you stay around long enough, you'll see a little Angry Hornet come out every now and then if the thing hurts the motor. Justin does our short blocks, and he's going to kind of give y'all a quick rundown of what's involved with short block on an 11,000 horsepower top fuel car. So you must have a little messier job working outside. Uh, yeah, it's not ideally how you build motors. I mean, <laughs> I work in a machine shop in my other life, and we're way cleaner than this, but these things... Not in a there. tent? Yeah, not in a tent, <laughs> on a floor, but... Uh, oh, so. yeah, look at that. Look at all the billets. Yeah, so we got this block back yesterday from repair, so we started stunting it up. Alright, so this is what you work on, just the short block. Yep, I built all the short blocks, so uh, we got this one back from repair from Brad Anderson yesterday. Um, in Las Vegas, we pulled that main stud out, so they put an oversize in for us and then redid the main line, tightened it up a little bit. So we got it studded up, and then this morning, we got a brand new Brian Crank that I'll put it in here shortly. Nice. Yep. We did it all put together. We do the camp timing and all that, and then you know, heads is a separate deal. Stuff like that. I got to go to work. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> do you have several short blocks ready to go in the trailer, or are they? Uh, we got three. This will be three. Normally, we like to have four or five, but at the end of the season, we've tarnished enough stuff that you don't always have everything that you like. But gotcha. Do you know approximately how much the bare block costs? Bear block new? Yeah. Bear block new is a little over 10 grand. When you first started doing these, you didn't have as much gray hair as me. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> One second. Just oh, time for a warm up. Time for a warm up. So, this is a brand new bullet in the car, so oh, we nice. have to double check cam timing and all that where the, center, the triggers are at because you got two megs and cam and uh, 
mag phasing. So you'll see it started up on gas, shut it back off, probably make some adjustments, fire it up again. We might fire it up two or three times depending on how close I got it when I built it. start and this was a brand new motor so we started on just gasoline yeah. and the mags have to be phased correctly and so that's what I was writing on my hand here where we phase the mags at. So we downloaded that data, Mike just ran up there to check, to look at everything, uh, make sure obviously oil pressure is good. I can see all that on the dash but so they'll make some adjustments on the mag for mag phasing, crank triggers, that sort of thing. Once they make that adjustment, then we'll start it on nitro. Gotcha. And at the rest of the day, when we start this thing up, we'll start it right on nitro. The first start of the day, though, you want to get a little heat in it. They run 70 weight oil, so it makes a ton of <laughs> oil pressure when you start them cold. <laughs> what, what is the mag? Can you explain what that does? So the, their ignition, the ignition on the car, their yeah. MSD, 44 amp mags, it has 16 spark plugs in it. You can take, at 8,000 RPM, you can take a spark plug off. And if all of us probably watching 1320 video have certainly done some welding at some point. Yeah. If you take your welder and set it at 88 amps, that's what's happening at the end of the spark plug wire. Really? So you can that literally much? take the spark plug wire and weld with it. Wow. And this thing's running at 8,000 RPM. <laughs> all right. Putting some nitro in now make sure this thing runs well. standing is where it all goes. Especially this fan right here. Great. So we're down here at the fuel cell up front. How much fuel is in here? This thing holds about 17 gallons of fuel when it's ready to go down the racetrack. What I want to know from you, how much fuel do you think we just burned on that warm-up? Oh man. Just a guess. What was that? About 30? Oh, that's probably about a minute, about wasn't a minute. it? About a minute. I'm going to guess two and a half. All right, we got a guess over here of four. Four? Okay. It's pretty close. It's going to be right at five gallons of fuel in that amount of time. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Holy I'm crap. I'm better at this guessing. Dang. <laughs> Did everything check out? Yeah. Yeah. We're close. We just had to adjust uh, make phasing a little bit to the phase them together. As far as the triggers and stuff, they were set that on. So. Beautiful. All right, folks, this is Ryan, and Ryan has one of the most time-consuming jobs on a <laughs> top fuel car. Probably close between you and Kaylin on the amount of time it takes, but probably. Ryan does the cylinder heads, and every single run, it is a, uh, a long process to get them ready to go, and Ryan's going to tell you all about it. Yeah, so, I mean, as far as the run goes, once we pick, tear them off the car, they get clean, and physically we'll take every valve out of the head. You can see the seats here. We'll go ahead and look at the seats. If we need to, we'll recut them, slap them. Uh, there is a part in here called a K-liner, which you see this little gold piece right here? Yep. Sometimes a little gold piece will want to come out on the exhaust side especially. So we'll put a new K-liner in, ream it to fit, realign it to the seat, check all your springs for tension. Basically, if that's good, put the heads back together, do spark plugs, and then they're ready to go. But like I said, if something catastrophic happens, and we gotta build more heads or whatever, like this guy here got fuzzed on the last pass. It's not horrible. But see this chamber? Yep. Okay, you see the difference here? Oh yeah. It's all burned up. We're trying to let itself 
eat it until real bad, but this net's no good anymore. How many complete sets of heads do you have on, on uh, deck? Right now there's one, two, I think we have five, we'll have five on deck. There's two more sets here and a set on the car. Wow. We'll have five right now. So That's crazy. How much does a complete set of heads cost approximately? I really don't know the number on that. This one over here has got all the studs in it, all the valves, all the nozzles. Each nozzle has two to four pieces inside of it, you know. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on to make it all work. Well, thank you for showing us around here. Thank you. Good luck today. Next up, we're here with Izzy, and why don't you explain what you do for the team here? I am the clutch assistant, and I assist Caitlin in doing whatever she needs. I cut a lot of discs. Um, another big responsibility that I have is tires. Um, tires are a huge part in what goes oh, yeah. on here. If you can't put the power to the wheels, then you can't do really anything. So, you want to come out by the tires? You can yeah. kind of quickly show me what you do. Yeah. All right. So, what are the important parts when we're when you're looking at the tires? And like, are these still have another? Run on them? Yep, so these are a two run set. Okay. We have two runs. That's two on. runs, alright. Yep. Um, when it goes bad, it'll usually pull plugs out of the center. Ah. And then there's like just little dots. It kind of looks like this, but there's a lot bigger and then a lot rougher. Gotcha. Um, so we look for those every time we go, and then I'll call over to Mike. The tires are good, so he knows that we don't have to switch tires. And, uh, another big part of tires is keeping them out of the sun because the sun can actually change the PSI in the tire. Sure. So we want to keep. You see the covers the, on cars a lot yep. of times. We want to keep them a certain PSI for whatever the track needs. Uh, so the sun will increase it and then make the tire bigger eventually. So how many spares do you have on hand? Um, we like to keep five, and we have five right now. We can we have up to six or seven. Just you got ten something. tires your total. How yep. much do they cost a piece? Uh, about six hundred bucks. Six hundred bucks a piece. Right. A pair, yeah. Got it. What pressure do you run them at on the track? It depends on the track. What's tip. the range? From seven four to eight two. Okay. Eight point two. Piece so it's pretty out. narrow range. Yep. Well, thank you for the insight into the tire department. No problem. Uh, you mentioned shaving or uh, we're you cutting the clutches. What's involved in that? Is it like so, resurfacing? When you get a brand new disc, um, they're not flat, and they need to be within a half thou of tolerance of ah. flatness. So then, if there's uh, movement in the clutch disc, they're not touching each other, so you'll get wrong wear, and then the car won't act properly. And where did you come from in motorsports? How did you end up here? What What was your background? Um, so I graduated high school with COVID standards. I graduated. I did two months of my senior year, and then kind of just working at a dealership. And then this job opportunity landed in my lap. Sold everything I owned and moved to Illinois. Really? Yep. What? Just last year? Yep. This is my first Holy year. Holy cow! So I, I was in Illinois in February. <laughs> Is it everything you were hoping it to be? Yeah, I'm having a blast. It's so much fun. I mean, and working on Clay's team. Yeah, is... it's it's a lot of fun. I'm having a blast. I plan on doing it for a while, so that's great to hear. Yeah. Well, welcome to the insane world of drag racing <laughs> at the highest it. level. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. I want y'all to meet Chris. Chris is our car chief, and pretty much, not pretty much, anything and everything that goes on when the car rolls back in after a run, any questions, anything goes through him, and then if it goes beyond that, then Chris then goes sees Mike. Nice. So you're overseeing all the other people we talk to that are responsible for different parts of the, the program. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. I am. I'm. Uh, I'm the official cat herder. Nice. I cat herd. That's what I do. And what's your background? How do you end up here? My background is. Uh, I started sand drag racing when I was a kid. Interesting. Yep. A little over 20 years ago, a friend of mine had a alcohol funny car, so I started working on it. And uh, through that, I met Terry McMillan and worked on his car for a few years here, starting in 2015. And uh, this year, this is my first year here with Clay, Clay and the guys, and uh, having a great time. And uh, my clutch girl came with me. You've all met her. Ah. So she and I have been together on the same race team okay. for whole careers. That's the actual reason you're here. Clay wanted her, right? Yeah, actually we're a, kind of a, I think we're a package deal. She's pretty badass. Uh, she's great. I've been she's, watching her all weekend. She's uh, she's like my track daughter. I got her back 100%. Love her to death. She's like a great her. person. Yep. What's she's the most challenging part of your job? Uh, 
managing the people, okay. keeping everybody happy, keeping the morale up. Yeah. You know, morale is really important, really important, you know, because we work so hard. So we always try to get out and do something fun and just keep things lighthearted. And uh, when it's time to get serious, I, I do quite a bit of barking. Yeah. But, it doesn't uh, matter what team you're on here in the pits here. Things yeah. go wrong, things don't go the way you want them to. And you got to get back in there and win the next round, no matter if it's today or exactly. next weekend or next year. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's just managing the people. A little smoky in here. Yeah. Is this normal work environment? <laughs> Alright folks, we are here with my crew chief Mike Clover. Mike is be all end all on all decisions, as he will tell you though, right up until he rolls me into the top beat, and then it's up to me from it's all you. Forward. But uh, Mike and I have done a lot of amazing things together. We won six straight world championships in the IHRA, 50 national events. There is not much we haven't done other than win an NHRA event together. I hate to think of how many runner-ups we've had, but it will happen when the time's right. And uh, we've done a lot, and definitely, you know, one of my best friends in the whole world, and it's fun working with him. So uh, long history. What are your main responsibilities as a crew chief? Oh, uh, as a crew chief, well, like Clay outlined before, uh, pretty much, you know, everything to do with, you know, how we run the car at the racetrack. Uh, you know, I talked to Doug and. And, and ask him what his what his mindset is, you know, what his goals are, and uh, um, you know he knows when he's got a little extra money to spend and when he doesn't. So, you know, we strategize, you know, with uh, with Doug. And, that tells you uh, how aggressive you can get. Yeah, with you know, trying you know, some things. It's a little more important to him to do better one weekend than another, and he's got the you know the parts to make that happen. You know, we'll, we'll you know we'll strategize uh, in, in not just on a parts uh, perspective, but you know what we think we need to run and and so on. Uh, but largely, you know, I have to watch the weather. Um, we have a great uh, uh, tune-up program, you know, that helps us to, uh, you know, get the car dialed in from, from run to run. So I'm basically responsible for everything. If it smokes and tires, it's my fault. If it drops a cylinder, it's my fault. If it runs good, it's also my fault. <laughs> There's too many things to mention in a short video yeah. that, you have, that you really have to do. Um, but all the different team members out here that we've been talking to, they all basically f flow through you to complete the package of how the car runs. Exactly. Well, thank you for the insights. Sure. I appreciate your time. Good luck in the next qualifier today. Thanks. All right, guys, you have been meeting all the members of this Parts Plus team, and right here you're going to meet Blaine. How's it going? Blaine is the guy that does the rods and pistons. Actually, one of the jobs that I've done on the race car many, many years ago, and uh, he's way smarter than me because they do a lot more checks than what I used to do. I used to just kind of <laughs> look, put some rings on it, bearing in it, and send it, but uh, Blake's going to tell y'all what it takes to keep rods and pistons in this 12,000 horsepower monster. Oh, yeah. Get at it, buddy. So, yeah, Clay introduced me. I, I do racks. So, when we run a rack, everything actually gets shorter. So, really? Yep, every, there's so much cylinder pressure that the rods will crush, the piston towers, uh, the pin towers crush, the piston pins, you know, they're wow. super thick. Oh, wow, you Thick wall little... pins, but <laughs> they'll bend. You know, this one's out around a thousandths and a half, so everything. None of them are perfect, or only a few of them are perfect. Only, only the brand new ones are perfect. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. So, and how many runs you get out of the pins? Pins will actually last a long time, but okay. when they start to bend, they'll bend pretty quick. I've got some in there from last year, two years ago, so nice. they'll last a long time. Um, the pistons and rods, on the other hand. Pistons and rods usually don't last as long. <laughs> they take a ton of abuse. We see a lot of pinch strings, um, pin tower crush, rods that crush past, you know, five thousands, can't use it. So that's when you gotta, you know, go in your drawer and figure out the parts that you need to build a rack. Sure. How many sets of these do you have on hand at this race? So I, can, I always come into Sunday with at least four racks built. Okay. So I can make it all the way to the finals every single Sunday. I mean, I've had to build seven in a weekend before, so <laughs> sometimes it's... And you like hope you don't that. have to do that this weekend. Absolutely not. You were saying the rods actually shrink? Yeah. On so, the runs? Yep. So, like a, a brand new rod will be, this one's plus one. A lot of them, you know, come as straight up zeros. Um, but after a couple runs, see this one's just got one run on it, and it's 2,000 shorter than it was when I got it brand new. Yep. And that actually can help us because the deck heights in the engine kind of vary. 
So in order to get all the piston out numbers to be the same, you would use, you know, like a two and a half and a three and a half to make up the thousandths difference in the deck. Um, so having the, the shorter parts actually, you know, if they're still good, it's it's really beneficial because you can, you know, adjust for a lot of the stuff that you can't get out of the block because they're not all they're not all perfect. Yep. So. so what are the costs of a, pist a set of pistons and a set of rods? So a set of rods, they usually run about fourteen hundred bucks, um, and pistons are they're a little bit cheaper than that. I want to say they're they're right around twelve hundred bucks for a set. Diamonds they come in sets of ten, um, so that, that actually is kind of nice to give you more than you need. Yeah, I think they expect us to break them. So, so how did you get to the point where you're at today? Where you come from oh, in motorsports? Yeah, it's it's actually a crazy story because. Me and our, our clutch girl, Caitlin, we went to UNOH. Yeah. And she graduated a couple years um, ahead of me. And our school did some news releases, and I found out about you know her job in, in the industry. And I messaged her on Instagram, and I was like, what did, how did you get a job? What do I need to be doing to do what you do? And she, you know, you gotta have your CDL, you should do this, do this. I checked all the boxes. I sent in my resume, and Within a week of graduating, I was in Charlotte at the Four Wides for my first race. Really? Yep. So the plan worked how you wanted it? To. I guess so. I didn't. That's I awesome. Did not expect a job out of it, but I I got lucky. Well, thank you for the insights into yeah. your world, what you do, and how you got here. And it's some good advice for people watching this video that want definitely. to do what you're doing. It's yeah. it's definitely possible, and your proof of it is pretty Absolutely. pretty incredible. Good luck doing your racing. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you. Now that you guys have gotten some insights into the team that it takes to run this car, the part the prices, it's race time. Clay's going up for qualifying right now. He's got to qualify in the top 16 to make race day on Sunday. third qualifier is currently number eight. Let's see if he can advance a little bit more in the qualifying rankings before tomorrow's elimination. see a 73 yeah but more importantly i can't wait look at the 60 foot Woo! 8 19 60 you can what? film all that i have <laughs> 8 19 60 foot holy crap yeah. is that your new pb oh no no okay no, 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 no. but that's that's that so this is all right, the just sheet. got the standing sheet yep so that's the standing sheet the highlighted marks are our car so we okay. were the quickest 60 foot of that session really congrats on the pass that's a good lap was that uh i put you in seventh uh let's just look and see uh puts us number six whoa moved up two spots yeah so you are going to be racing six first what six Ten? versus 11. 11 okay oh you're racing 11. alex yep to get your rematch get a rematch so i gotta tell the truth like I flip to that page, I don't care to see the ladder. Like, I'm better off not having those thoughts during the night. Okay, if I beat Alex, I might race, you know. Yeah. I like to just know who I got first round and the rest of it. I'll take Focus it Focus on goes. what you need to do. Yeah. Stop by Clay's Pits before we head back to the hotel to see what they were looking like. And they have this thing basically down to the bare block and the bare chassis almost. Like, the electronics are in there, obviously, but you can see every little piece of this car. See the fuel cell up here, the 17 gallon fuel cell. Look at the, look at the pipe blowing.
everything back to the engine, all the electronics. Doesn't get much more torn down than this. No, not really. <laughs> this is a regular Saturday night deal for us to see everything runs. Go through every little detail. Well, we pull the rear end apart, crack check it. Nice. Make sure everything's kosher, the backlash is good, the bearings are all nice and lovely and gonna keep on rolling. So gotta make sure everything's perfect for Sunday. 3.7 seconds. Yeah. How the hell we run today? It was Congratulations, good. guys. Yeah, ran really well. Pretty happy. The that. scoreboards were, weren't working. I was like, yeah. what the hell are you run? I know, it kind of freaked me out when I turned around. Like, <laughs> Did oh, he yeah, red light? <laughs> Even with that, it would have got a time. Oh, yeah, true. So I don't know what happened. That was weird. All right, it's race day. First round eliminations in an hour. We're here with Clay Milliken's team for their team meeting. Last race of the season. Fortunately, um, I feel blessed because at the end of the, the, end of the day today, when we, we finish finish up with the final round and the trucks are loaded and everybody's happy and rejoicing on the accomplishments we had this year. Uh, we as a group get to look forward to doing it for another year together and, and that, that, that is great. You have a job. <laughs> this year's had its ups and downs and its challenges and its successes. Um, the one thing I mentioned to somebody yesterday in a meeting was that, you know, when as an organization, uh, be it finances, be it emotions, whatever it is, when one person in this group gets down, everybody gets down and fights. We all get down and you fight the battle with me. You fight the battle with Whitney, you fight the battle with Clay. We all fight together. We fight as a team and we fight as a unit. You've done it all year long. It's amazing the struggles and the hurdles that we've had to overcome. I'm literally amazing. Behind each person is a curtain, and behind that curtain we all fight our own battles and we all achieve our own successes. You people as a group have grown together and grown individually into, into people that I'm very proud to call my friends, my co-workers, and an alliance to go out and kick ass when it comes time to race. So thank you for teaming up with us, teaming up with Whitney and myself and Clay and Donna and, and Mike and getting behind us. An inside view into top field team you don't normally get to see. That was that was special. Ready to do this? I am. This is your day. It's a good day, brother. We, uh, oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those like, all right, car's done, Every, they've done, everybody's done their job, now it's kind of up to me. And I've done this for 20 plus years, and I've got butterflies. Before first round, I don't know what it is, I think it's a good thing. Um, it's now up to me to go out there and do my job and not let all these people down. I mean, you can see from our little team meeting in there, very, very close knit group. Yeah. And the last thing I want to do is be the one that lets them down. So, you know, it's, it's uh, funny that everybody wants to talk to the driver, this, that, and the other, but the truth is, that thing won't run without all them. And yep. I just get to do a lot of talking. And I hope <laughs> I do a lot of talking today. Hell yeah. It'll be a good day. It is. Good luck, Clay. It'll be a good day. Thank you guys so much for coming out here. This is really, really cool. First round for Top Fuel, Clay versus Alex here and their friends. And there's a rematch. Last time they raced, Clay's car had issues and Alex beat him. He wants revenge right now. And they are ready to roll second pair down the track. And I was uh, I was talking to Fred earlier, asking for some stickers because Clay wanted to put some on the car. I came up here and look at this. There we go. <laughs> And once Clay gets back to the pits, they're going to be tearing down their motor, checking everything, putting it back together. They have about 45 minutes to get this done. I've got a time lapse set up so we can see what this is all about. Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Go play. Oh wow. Clay got it. 376. Oh, yeah, I got a 54. Yeah. Nice. Go play. Hell yeah. Clay did it. Going on to the next round. Woo! Down.
down here on the top end with Clay Milliken. First round winner in eliminations. You I tell did you what, it. This guy right here, we got it. Nice that, run, guys. That was a little payback. You kicked my butt, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> no, you didn't. That's a good car, but I tell you what, I love. Hey, love stomping on that live pedal. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, told Mike on the radio, I let right, the car get in front of me a little bit. I was a little weakly going down through there. But. The team did what they got to do to give me a round win. We get to do it again. I can't wait. Yeah. Great job, guys. Look at that. They have a uh, CHP to take them through the pits. Nice work. Look at that sticker. <laughs> Clay going on to second round. They're heading back to the pits to turn the car around. They have somewhere around less than an hour, so they got to turn this car around quickly. I have a GoPro set up so you can see just how long it takes. It gets wild in the pits. Ben Petter to have over to you. Steve Crispin looking for the new Justin. So how'd that first round win feel? It was good. I tell you, nice, smooth run. Uh, I told Michael on the radio I let the car get in front of me a little bit. Uh, What's that mean? So, again, me and Mike have done this together forever, a long, long time, and, and he wanted me to be to the inside of the racetrack for the first 330 foot, and then ease it back over into the middle. And all we're trying to do is stay on the best part of the racetrack. Gotcha, I heard it's a little bumpy out there. And uh, so, I stayed to the inside of the 330, and I was too aggressive moving the car back to the middle. And so what I mean by I got in front of me, these things are so long, so when I brought it back, I brought it back too aggressively. Ah. So it makes the back end sashay out a little bit. I saw that and for then sure. it starts this. You know, it's like a, I'm an old guy, so it's like a slinky. If you remember the slinky, slinky, yes, of you know, course. Like, so, and there's no stopping it under power. Yeah, it's, once, once you get one sachet and you don't catch it quick enough, it does it the rest of the run. Uh, it costs you a little ET. Can make it spin the tires a little bit, and we actually saw a little bit of tire spin towards the top end. That was probably my fault, but there is some bumps out there. And most people don't realize that there are times we're trying to drive around them, even though it's a straight run. Yeah. The drag race is supposed to go straight, but not always. We're trying to take advantage of the best parts of the racetrack. But good race. I mean, uh, yeah. Scott Palmer and those guys. You know, if we had made a mistake, we'd have been in trouble. So. Now we get to race Cameron Gray, and I'm not sure, but I think if we win this round, it will move us past Leah in points. Really? So it's a pretty important round, and I know it was huge for Cameron to win here. This is his home race, yeah. and I like those guys too, but when the helmet's on, there are no friends. Right. like that 66 minutes from the point that they got back here to, to warming it up right now a little bit slower than they're used to going but as the rounds go there's less time because they're going on TV time and there's less cars to run in each round so they get down to somewhere around 35 to 40 minutes towards the finals center with the clutch which would start engaging the clutch. The majority of the oh. drivers out here have a pedal stop. I'm very old and done this a thousands and thousands of times. I don't use one. So all I'm doing is I know what I should feel and I take the little mirror to make sure the rear tires aren't rotating. Oh when you start it up yeah, that's before you check it. What are the other stuff during a So the other thing you know you'll see is you know Mike does this, that means turn the switches on, which turns on the race pack computer, turns on the ignition, okay. and 
I charged the clutch system, which we've kind of talked about, you know, it's air over hydraulic, so I'm pushing a button that charges the CO2 system. And I just maintain neutral. Again, I don't have a pedal stop, so I've got to lock my leg where I know it's neutral. Mike will get all the, the fuel pressure settings right, and on that particular warm-up, you probably might have noticed me pointing at something, so I know what the numbers were supposed to be. Gotcha. I and, saw you pointing at something on the dash. Yeah, so I was, I was looking at fuel flow versus fuel pressure. Those numbers were a little off, and he can make an adjustment on what's called the barrel valve. Uh -huh. I saw him tweaking things. Yep, to rearrange that. Gotcha. And then the other thing we do is kind of does this and all that is I'm checking reverse you know it's already in forward so we just make sure to go in reverse and back in forward and then the next thing which you know a lot of people miss the throttle whack we don't do the throttle yeah. whack Scott Palmer and them do it and Alexis does it yeah. but Mike will come and just hold up two fingers what that means is turn the fuel pump all the way on take your foot off the clutch and hold the brake so you'll hear the motor tug down a little bit so all we're doing is making sure even though everything's been cut nice and flat on the clutch, we're giving it a chance to seat against itself. So we're just basically making all the clutch parts, at least before the run, have been clamped together for just a little bit. And that's kind of the process. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty simple, but at the same time, it's got to be done exactly right yeah. or it can mess the run up. And I see everyone on the team watching the things they're responsible for and make sure they're doing what they need to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every, every person on the car, they're looking at their spot and looking over everybody else as well. But that's what it takes to turn on wind lights. Well, that's right. You did it first round. Just got to do a second now. Got to do it again. Keep going on. Keep going. Unfortunately, Clay having issues on the track, not making a full pass. We'll catch up with him in a little bit to find out why, but not making it past second round, unfortunately, this weekend. <laughs> well, things didn't go as planned, unfortunately, in second round. Definitely not, you know, and it's one of those things where we had the better car, we should have won the round, but it goes back to that old cliche, they don't race them on paper. And, uh, sure exactly what happened but y'all are going to get to take a sneak peek of uh, a little bit of data from Mike and it's frustrating but I am not a uh, I told you I'm not a helmet kicker and thrower and all that stuff yeah. I still realize how lucky I am to do what I do you know win lose or draw I'm always smiling because I just drove a 12,000 horsepower <laughs> top fuel car you know so I'm not going to get mad about it I like that <laughs> all right let's go see what the data says yep. Hello! How's it going? You can sit wherever you need right. to be. So let's decipher some things. Uh, decipher some things. So I'm, I make the assumption you'd like to know why it, why we smoked the tires when it didn't look like we would be yeah. a car that we're going to smoke the tires like that. In, uh, in review of the run, this was uh, the run to see here now. That's our, our first round run. And then uh, second round, you can see that the Oop. engine, it just uh, it put up drive shaft speed. It just, right where it, it, just, it just smokes the tires. <laughs> and it, the drive shaft RPM literally goes almost straight up. Seven tenths of a second uh, to get to 8,700 RPM, the rear tires. That's a lot of rotating mass to, yeah. to get accelerated that, that fast in the run. And then a normal looking run, like from first round, what the drive shaft would look like that. It would go up, but then turn turn the corner. We never we never even tried to do what we call turn in the corner. The engine tried to turn the corner, but the drive shaft the rear tires, they didn't want to turn the turn the corner, so and uh, that's when you uh, when you test the traction over by the edges. <laughs> yeah. That's from a wobbly driver. <laughs> well, what did you see? One more thing, because we've sure. shown it on my videos. Obviously, a lot more people are going to see yours than, than mine. Stick a G meter up for both of those roads. Oh yeah, I want to yeah. see that. <laughs> uh, here's here's uh, 
good G's. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'll filter that out to make it look a little sure. prettier. And the yellow line. And then this is uh, second round. No G's. It, it tried. It lasted How about many G's? We got 3.86. So, well, we could, we could easily say that two tenths into the run, we were done. G meters going down. Yeah. Kind of First round of eliminations. Well, that's yeah. E1 G's are up here. Yeah. What's the numbers on those? Oh, the numbers. Yeah, it gets out here to the middle and it's a uh, big G spike. Out here is. Uh, Five. Six G's, 5.87. Yeah. Wow, what's that feel like? That's fun. Yeah, that's, that's why fun. That's why I do this. I it's think I've been 1.5 G's on the launch, and that was pretty fun. I can't imagine yeah. six. Well, obviously, we were hoping to watch Clay take home a trophy this weekend. That didn't quite happen, but it was such an amazing insight into the top, highest, highest level of drag racing. Big thank you to the entire team for allowing us to come and get the insights that we did for this video. There's not many teams here that will show you every little detail. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure to subscribe for more 1320 videos, and we'll catch you next time.